Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. And today we're going to start a two-part lesson on significant figures, a very important topic in chemistry. And so by the end of this, you should understand what it means to be significant. It's not quite the same as important. Uh, and you should understand how this relates to the resolution of the instruments and how to identify sig figs in measurements, and then finally to understand why some zeros are significant and some are not. And so I have four balances here, and you might be surprised that even though they all handle about the same mass, they have vastly different prices, ranging from $150 all the way up to over $2,000. And if you'll notice, the, really the only difference between them is the fact that the more expensive balances have higher resolution. They go to more places past the decimal. And so you are going to pay more to get a more uh, precise measurement, to have instrumentation with higher resolution. And so the numbers you write down are important because if they have more digits past the decimal, they probably were taken from instruments that cost more. And so the numbers we write down have to reflect the equipment they came from. So if you write down 6.732 centimeters, uh, you did not read that off a classic classroom ruler. Just as if you wrote down 6.7 centimeters, you didn't record that off a classic classroom ruler. And so this gets into the concept of what digits are significant. And significant simply means digits measured against a scale. And that includes the one you, where you guess the gap. And the term significant, I think, is probably one of the more unfortunate terms in science uh, because, again, it has the connotation of being important. And all numbers in a measurement are important, and we'll, we'll show you that later. But only some of those digits were measured against a scale. So had they named these scale digits, I think it would be much less confusing. Um, for example, counted numbers are never significant because they weren't measured against a scale. So if you go outside and count birds on a wire, then that's not a significant measurement. It's important, you want to know how many birds are there, but it's not significant, it wasn't measured against a scale. Metric, metric conversions, English, English conversions are definitions and hence not measured against a scale. So although it's important to understand there are 12 inches in a foot or 100 centimeters in a meter, those aren't significant measurements because they weren't measured against a scale. No one had to measure it, they knew it as a definition. And at least in my opinion, if, if you're going between scales, on the other hand, those are significant because someone had to lay two scales next to each other and measure that. There is no definition of an inch being 2.54 centimeters, and someone could go measure that worse or better than somebody else. It's not like you can go count 15 cows better than I can. And so in my opinion, uh, conversions between scales are significant, but, but there are certainly people out there with, that would disagree with me on that. So if you see a, a measurement, uh, it's very easy to count sig figs. First off, all non-zero numbers had to be significant. They had to be measured against the scale. Zeros sometimes we get in trouble. Sometimes a zero in a measurement is significant, and sometimes it is not. And that might sound confusing, but really, sort of in a primal way, you already understand this concept. And I'll give you two examples. If you see two numbers 4.0 centimeters or 4.000 centimeters, I think you understand that, you know, intrinsically that second number was, was, has a higher quality of measurement. Um, it must have been measured against a, a better piece of equipment. And when someone says a dinosaur bone is 68 million years old, it, it's unlikely that you think, wow, how did they get that so exact? Uh, next year it'll be 68 million and one years old. What a, what a coincidence, it's right on, on 68 million. You understand that certain zeros weren't measured. Some were and some weren't. And so we've got to look into zeros and understand why some of them are and some of them are not significant. And the way you can tell on a, on a measurement is very simple. Uh, snuggle zeros, zeros in the middle of a number, uh, had to be measured against the scale because the bookended numbers were measured, and so any number in the middle just wound up on zero instead of a one, two, or three. So those are easy. Don't worry about those. Uh, for example, in the first one, it's obviously four. In the second one, it's, it's five. Uh, but if you have zeros to the left of numbers, those are never significant because those are always placeholder zeros. Uh, and, and, and the first example I put down there because it makes a lot of sense that you didn't measure those two zeros in front of the 27. They're just there to hold places. Now, there'd be no reason to hold those places in a number larger than one. But in numbers smaller than one, we definitely need zeros to hold place. But again, you didn't measure those against a scale. Those are just there to get us to the tiny number. Um, so... 
Those are two sig figs and three sig figs uh, respectively. The tricky part is our zeros after uh, the number. Those are called, I call them trailing zeros. They're at the end of the parade. And sometimes they are significant and sometimes they aren't, and that gets into the two examples on the prior page. When there's a decimal in the number, then any zeros on the end were actually measured against the scale, they just ended up being on the zeros. But if there is no decimal in the number, then those zeros are placeholders, just like the placeholder zeros in example number two. And the interesting thing about uh, zeros are if you put them in scientific notation, uh, they disappear if they're non-significant. So in example number two, those two zeros at the beginning would disappear. That would become 2.7 times 10 to the first. And in the second example, by uh, number three, uh, 1,200, they would also disappear. And that would become 1.2 times 10 to the third. And so that's one way to kind of understand whether a zero is significant or not, is try putting it in scientific notation and see what happens to the zero. Finally, uh, you'll, you'll run into occasionally a weird situation where you have a series of zeros um, some that were measured against the scale, and then somewhere in the middle they stopped being measured against the scale because you ran out of, of significance. Uh, but we can't stick a decimal in the middle of the number. We can't change the number from 54,000 to 540. And so we'll put a bar over that zero in the middle to indicate that that and all zeros to the left are significant and anything to the right is not. And you won't run into that situation often, but sometimes you do. Now, there are a lot of gimmicks to understand uh, when zeros are significant and when they aren't. There's a method called the Atlantic Pacific method. Uh, now, now, you can certainly use that to help you, um, but, but memorizing that doesn't help you understand the concept of significance. And you're better off understanding what makes a zero significant, and then you'll be less likely to get them wrong. You can always forget the gimmicks. I can't remember them. And so let's look at these two scales, and hopefully it'll help cement this idea in your brain. And so in the first... Uh, scale, you would read that as 230. You can read the two, you guess the three, you guess the gap, and that's as far as you can go. Now you can't write down 23. You need that zero to get to 230. It is an important number, but it was not measured against a scale. It's a placeholder zero. And so that zero is not significant. So there are two sig figs and 230. But if you look at the second scale, um, that zero, there's a line for it right there, and then the scale goes to the tenths place, and so I'm guessing that, and it happens to be on zero, too. And so those were measured against the scale, hence they are significant zeros. All right, they count towards the measurement. That is three sig figs. So understand that when zeros are placeholders, even before or after, then they don't count as significant. You need them there, so the number doesn't change but they don't count as a significant measurement. It doesn't mean that your equipment was that precise. But if the zeros are, are if there's a decimal in the, in the number, then those zeros were measured against the scale. And so they are significant. They just happen to be zeros, that's all. Now I know this can be confusing, um, but you certainly, there, there's, there's plenty of practice problems out there. But it's very, very important that you can look at numbers that other people measured and identify what numbers were measured against a scale and what zeros were just placeholders. It's going to take practice, but it's worth your time. What we're going to do next time is we are going to take these numbers that we carefully uh, and lovingly measured off scales, and we're going to maintain the significance of their measurements through the calculations. And so we're going to show you how to use significant figures in math and to respect the equipment that got you those so that your answer reflects the significance of your data. Um, it's very exciting, it's a big deal, and so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.